Good morning. I would like to call to order the March 14th meeting of the McGee Creek Authority. The first item on the agenda is a resolution of appreciation for Brett Weingart, Assistant Utilities Director. Charity, would you read that please? Yes. Whereas Brett Weingart is retiring on March 28, 2024, after 30 years of exemplary service to the citizens, council members, trustees, and senior leadership of the city of Oklahoma City, and whereas Mr. Weingart since 2001 has served as the Assistant Director of Utilities and intermittently served as a surrogate trustee for the McGee Creek Authority, and whereas Mr. Weingart prepared recommended water sale contract procedures and pricing options for marketing McGee Creek Authority participants' water to customers along the McGee Creek Authority and Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust Pipelines with respective cost recovery procedures and adoption by both trusts in 1996. And whereas Mr. Weingar assisted trustees in transferring the ownership title of the McGee Creek headquarters, pump station, pipeline facilities, and easements to the McGee Creek Authority. And whereas with the assistance of the Municipal Counselor's Office, Mr. Weingart provided briefings to trustees, enabling them to establish aliquot share procedures to account for financial contributions and in lieu credits from sales of water by participants' water customers in compliance with the amended trust indenture. And whereas Mr. Weingart provided financial technical support to the U.S. Department of Interior and the Bureau of Reclamation in marketing the McGee Creek water supply with the eventual sale of water to new customers along the Atoka pipeline, lessening financial burdens on the McGee Creek Authority participant members. And whereas Mr. Weingart authored the first Bureau of Reclamation, Reclamation McGee Creek Authority Water Conservation Plan in 2006 that federal officials used as a guideline for helping other reservoir projects prepare their plans. Now therefore be it resolved by the trustees of the McGee Creek Authority that they do hereby gratefully recognize the contributions of Brett Weingart and thank him for 30 years of meritorious service to the McGee Creek Authority and congratulate him on his retirement. Thank you, Jerry. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. So if, if you've enjoyed working with Brad over the last 30 years, I may or may not have hired him. <laughs> it, it, if you've had some challenging times with Brad, it's a little fuzz. I don't really remember how he got there. I'm just, I'm just no, Brett, congratulations. Uh, you served the, the, the utility well. You've, you've made numerous, uh, involved, been involved in numerous improvements uh, throughout the utility from all kinds of operational, financial, got our credit rating up to AAA, you've done, done significant things to improve uh, the utility and the citizens of Oklahoma City and the state of Oklahoma are much better off because of your service to the, to the city of Oklahoma City. So thank you for your service. I would, I'd also like to add, Chairman. Uh, Brett, thank you for your friendship over the last 12 years of my service on the council in Atoka, having uh, the ability to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, how, how do we work on these things? And, and not even be tied to Miggy Creek, just items we needed in Atoka. And that, that, uh, that response um, is just incredible. Thank you for your service and appreciate your friendship. Yeah, I'd like to add, um, you know, Brett's been a very valuable member of the team. Uh, anything that needed to be done, he was always willing to step up and get it done, and he will be missed. So thank you so much for your service, Brett. All right. All those in favor of the resolution, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. It, it carries, Brett. Congratulations. Does that mean he retires now? Well, he can, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Item two is approval of the minutes of the September 14th meeting. It's in your packet. Do the uh, trustees have any concerns or questions regarding the minutes? No, sir. Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Motion? Second. And a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. The motion carries. Item three is a consent docket. There are uh, 11 items on the consent docket. There's everything from some contract amendments, uh, selection of our bank's uh, auditor, a number of, uh, of uh, 
amendments, change orders, a couple of contracts. Um, are there any items on the consent docket that any of the trustees would like to pull for individual consideration? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the consent docket in, in its entirety? So moved. Motion? Second. In a second. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Next up is items for individual consideration. Item 4A is to receive the annual financial report and communications related to the audit for the McGee Creek Authority for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2023. Mr. Chairman, Jim, John Samuel will be doing the presentation this morning. Excellent. Good morning, Chairman and the trustees. Jiffy John Samuel, Financial Operations Manager here. This agenda item that you have, it receives the FY23 Annual Financial Report for the McGee Creek Authority. <clears throat> the city's finance department is responsible for providing accounting services for the trust, and it helped prepare the financial document providing financial statements and analysis. The Accounting Services Division ensures that the transactions of the trust are recorded accurately, making sure that we are in compliant with the generally accepted accounting principles. In compliance with the state, with the statutory requirement, the trust engaged external auditors, Allen, Gibbs, and Harlick, LC, to conduct its audit on the financial statement. For fiscal year 2023, the external auditors found that the MCA financials were presented fairly and were free of any material findings. The overall financial condition of the trust uh, fared slightly lower in comparison to the previous fiscal year. Some of the highlights include the net position a decrease in the amount of $632,205 in comparison to prior year for an ending position of $74,767,000. The operating revenues for the Maggie Creek were recorded at $1.17 million, and the operating expenses were recorded at $1.75 million. The operating expenses so saw a slight increase, roughly around 126,000, and this is partly attributed to increase in personal services cost, operations, and maintenance. <clears throat> the operating revenues decreased by 4.46 million, and this is due to the changes in the cash requirement tied to the McGee Creek debt service that are secured by the aliquot share revenues from the participants of the authority. The authority also implemented several new accounting standards in fiscal year 2023, and none of them had any impact, any material impact on the trust financials. I would also like to point out, <clears throat> excuse me, I would also like to point out an important mention in the financial statement during fiscal year 2023 that the McGee Creek Revenue Bonds Series 1992 were paid off. The revenue bonds, uh, the, the Series 1992 revenue bonds uh, were issued to purchase the storage rights and related assets, um, which in turn repaid the construction costs for the Bureau of Reclamation for the McGee Creek Reservoir. Last but not the least, I also want to take this opportunity to thank the Accounting Services Division from the Finance Department who helped prepare this financial statement and also the Business Manager, Vanessa Golar, for her leadership and guidance throughout the review process of this financial statement. With that said, I'll be happy to take any questions if you all may have. As I read the audit, uh, it appears to be what's referred to as a clean audit. Okay, that, that's the lead. <laughs> um, any questions regarding the audit? Do I have a uh, 
a motion to receive the annual financial report and, and audit. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign and the motion carries. Thank you, Jeffy. Thank you. Item B is a presentation on the McGee Creek Authority fiscal year 2025 budget. Chairman Brandy Wolfskill will be presenting the budget along with Mark Long. Good morning, Chairman and Trustees. I'm Brandy Wolfskill, and I'm here to present the FY25 McGee Creek Authority budget. My aim today is to highlight the key aspects of our financial plan for the upcoming year. The sources for this year's finance fiscal year total is $10,492,000. This includes raw water sales from the Atoka Rural Water District 4, estimated to be $578,000. This does contain a rate plan adjustment. Interest earnings are estimated to be at $2,000, reflecting a shift from previous years due to the defeasance of bond accounts in FY23, leaving only our operating accounts contributing to the interest earnings. For fiscal year 25, we anticipate the Bureau of Reclamation reimbursement to be $70,000. This reimbursement is tied to a long-standing contract dating back to the 1990s. Under this arrangement, the BOR represent, or reimburse 8.55% of eligible expenses linked to O&M and capital expenditures concerning the dam and reservoirs. Aquit's aliquot share component is anticipated to be approximately $6.6 .6 million. And then the remainder of our sources comes in the form of a loan from Aquit to McGee Creek Authority and is anticipated to be $3,280,000. So within our operations, we have earmarked $440,000 for personnel services. This encompasses salaries, benefits, and retirement contributions for our McGee Creek employees. This allocation incorporates provisions for both cost of living adjustments and merit adjustments to the pay plan. We're expecting a 2% increase in our contracts and services, bringing that total value to $852,000. This is largely due to expenses in insurance and service contracts. Additionally, we have factored a slight increase in our expenditures on equipment and supplies. This increase is mainly fueled by escalating costs in our pump and motor refurbishment program, along with higher expenses in both our tires and tubes. As a result, we anticipate the estimated value of equipment and supplies to reach $137,000. Our operating and CIP reserve is estimated at $300,000, and this is a reserve that we established in FY23, which helps provide funding authority for any unforeseen operating expenses or capital emergency repairs. And with that, I will hand this presentation over to Mark Long, who will be able to provide insight into our capital expenditures. Thank you. <clears throat> the uh, capital budget is eight, proposed to be $8,763,000. Included in that will be pump station and pipeline facility improvements in the amount of $5,200,000. The MCA headquarters and residence building, those projects have been underway for several years, but they will total at $3,050,000. The equipment replacement will be $254,000. For BOR projects, as Brandy had mentioned in the agreement where we'll be doing repairs and maintenance items that are recommended by the BR is budgeted at $150,000 and then some additional technology improvements of 109,000 related to the new headquarter building and residence as we are bringing those buildings online. I would like to add that the pump station and pipeline facility, that 5.2 million was identified as part of a 2018 facility assessment that has been uh, deferred until budget funds were made available and that has now uh, come to a realization, so we'll be able to start on those uh, very needed uh, improvements to the pump station facilities themselves. With that, we can answer any questions. $8.7 million is all-time high for capital for McGee Creek, I assume. 
So, yes. so I mean, doing the pump station, doing the, doing the, the, the facilities, uh, the headquarters and, and such, what do we see as uh, the capital projection over the next several years? On, and, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in the update. Um, well, I can wait till then if that's more appropriate. We go to the next slide. Um, so on the, on the pump station, when we did the facility assessment in 2018, we took an asset management approach. And so we've been looking at it, working with uh, Ron and Byron down there as far as what they've been able to improve and maintain. So the, the 5.2 is what we are going to reassess and then start putting out in bid packages over the next two to three years. I'm confused on that. So, so you're, you're going to bid the 5.2 out over multiple years, or there's going to be more beyond the 5.2? Well, what <laughs> we're, we're, we're designing for that 5.2, we believe we'll be able to have those projects ready, but we've had some issues where we've had to roll over to the next year. Okay. And, and that's really due to the, how the, the budget is versus what we expend. Yeah, I don't so. really care year to year. I'm just looking at total future capital projects. I know they get... <laughs> from uh, okay this 5.2 million is basically addressing all of the capital needs that were identified in 2018 so in the next few years outside of rollover of this 8.7 the capital budget should decrease significantly that is correct okay very good thank you are there any questions regarding the uh, the budget Seeing none, we'll move on to item B2, which is a resolution adopting the McGee Creek Authority fiscal year 2025 budget, capital improvement projects, and pay plan, and directing the general manager to implement and administer the budget and capital improvement projects, including, but not limited to, development of plans, specifications, bid solicitations, bid evaluations, contract negotiations, and award recommendations in accordance with the McGee Creek Authority purchasing policies and procedures, and delegating to the chairman the authority, the authority to award and execute contracts as needed, which comply with applicable law, and that do not exceed the funds available in the McGee Creek Authority fiscal year 2025 budget, pursuant hereto for ratification by the trustees. Is there an, a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Second. Motion to approve and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. The motion carries. Item C is the fiscal year 2025 loan agreement with the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust. Estimated cost of $3.28 million. Mr. Chairman, Jivy John Samuel will present this item. Good morning, Chairman and the Trustees again. Uh, this particular agenda item is part of the uh, ongoing uh, support agreement where the AQUIT is um, supporting the McGee Creek Authority with ongoing operations and expenses. And this is uh, consistent with what's been done historically with the McGee Creek Authority's relationship yes. with the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust. Yes. Any questions regarding the loan agreement? Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. The motion carries. Item B is a resolution directing the general manager to request participants to request participants make an election regarding annual allocate cost for fiscal year 2025 in accordance with the McGee Creek amended trust indenture. Staff recommends approval of this item, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and again, this is in, uh, in line with what we've historically done it with is. our relationship with the, with the participants. Any questions? Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the same sign. The motion carries. Item E, to keep the operation going, we have a resolution approving McGee Creek Authority funds 
as to such become available for fiscal year 2025 equipment replacement, authorizing the general manager or designee to purchase such equipment items from state and other intergovernmental cooperative purchasing contracts bid and awarded in a manner consistent with the practices of the trust and or state law and directing the general manager or designee to prepare bid specifications or request for proposals for remaining equipment formally advertised and present derived project contracts to the trust for consideration of award and authorizing the general manager or designee to declare fiscal year 2025 surplus items that are sold for more than $25,000 as surplus of the needs of the McGee Creek Authority. Estimated cost, $254,000. Do we have questions from regarding item E? Seeing none, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. The motion carries. Item F is a resolution authorizing the general manager to update McGee Creek Authority personnel policies. Mr. Browning. Mr. Chairman, we would like to make sure that all of our employees have the same set of rules and practices and policies in place, uh, including McGee Creek. Um, so we're updating the McGee Creek Authority uh, personnel policies to uh, be consistent with the Oklahoma City employee policies. Um, and so at this time, we recommend uh, approval of this item so that we can update their policies accordingly. Are there significant changes or are they morally the um, in line with existing? The, the first one is um, secondary employment to match our secondary employment uh, terms and conditions. Um, and that's pretty much it, other than, you know, we, we try to keep their pay consistent with, with the pay of the employees here and so on and so forth. But, but that secondary employment is one of the items that needs to be updated. All right. Any questions regarding the modifications of the personnel policies? No, sir. Seeing none, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. The motion carries. Item five is items from trustee. Do any items for this morning? All right, seeing none, general manager reports. Item A, water use report for calendar year 2023. Mr. Chairman, Ron Butler would be happy to provide us with that information. Morning, Mr. Butler. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, trustees. Water use report for year 2023. This is an annual report turned into the Water Resources Board with a total public water use of 7.8 billion gallons. A total of 7.5 billion gallons were transferred over to Lake Atoka. And, and then <clears throat> the Remainder of that is uh, 368 million gallons. It was uh, sold locally, mostly to Rural Water District 4. And I believe one month of that was uh, sales to the city of Toka. The second page of that report is just a monthly breakdown of the same information. And if I may, I'll proceed to the operations report. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> The uh, operations of McGee Creek since our last meeting is uh, fairly routine in nature. We did uh, not have anything come about unexpected. Things are ready to run right now. We're at almost 100%, not in this report, as we recently uh, removed one pump and motor to be refurbished. So we still have the capabilities of moving 70 million gallons a day if the need arises. A few events that happened uh, during these past few months, it, I want to notice some events that we had with the Bureau of Reclamation. We attended a dam tender training, which is necessary over four years in uh, January here at Norman. In January the 23rd, we did a functional EAP exercise with 20 people in attendance and 10 online, so it was a pretty good group for us. That went very well without uh, any hiccup. There was no recommendations when that was over. End of January, the Bureau was at McGee Creek again for a mechanical inspection. That's of the uh, river outlet works, the Elm and I, everything associated to the dam. 
they turn every switch, push every button, make sure every light shines, and there was nothing they found wrong there. I'm pleased to report. As recent as yesterday, and we'll talk more about this in the next trust meeting, the Bureau of Reclamation was back for their annual site inspection. And that went well. There may be one recommendation come out of that. And now, if I may, we'll move on to the lake level and pumpage report. Rainfall, we had uh, five months that we was below normal, but by the end of the year, we exceeded our yearly average, over an inch and a half of rain. Reservoir has been 100% full or better for most of the year. We had a water pumpage to uh, Toka Lake in the amount of 24,341.28 acre feet and electrical cost of close to $400,000. And that is all I have. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions or comments from Mr. Butler? Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thank Ron. you. Next up is the presentation regarding project updates. Mr. Long. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and trustees. This is the capital improvement program um, update of the project statuses that we are underway with or have completed. WMC 035 is the facility road improvements. If you recall, about three years ago, we started the process of updating many of the roads surrounding uh, the McGee Creek area that are of responsibility of MCA. Uh, those six sections of roadway were the pump station road, dam road, spillway road, and dike road. Those have been now completed under WMC 0351 by Ellsworth Construction. The final projected, our project is at two, a little over 2.1 million. We also have a, a WMC 0352, which will be uh, phased after the completion of the headquarter building and the residence and that will address Ferris, South Ferris Road and the crossover road. And that's a map showing you the roads that we have left. The main roads are the ones that tie into the headquarter building. We don't want those to be improved and then have all the heavy traffic over the next year while we're constructing the headquarter building. <clears throat> WMC 036 and WMC 039 our, our uh, Bureau of Reclamation inspection uh, recommendations and regulating tank improvements. Uh, that project was awarded in June of 23 to Nash Construction. <coughs> we are at about 90% complete now at this time, and we do expect to complete the project uh, for this in May of this year. Uh, one of the key items on this was, this was redoing the electrical that you can see there on the slide. This was electrical conduit and wiring that was faulty that is critical to the operation of the pump facility on the dam slope itself. WMC 037 revised. This was our second attempt at bidding out the McGee Creek headquarter building. Uh, we did open those bids and are planning to award that to Mack Hill Construction uh, in the amount of 2.9 million uh, this will include a new headquarter building plus a shop and other site improvements, and we anticipate that it will be completed in May of 2025. We will hold off on demolishing the existing headquarter building and residence so that uh, both this and the new project will be completed. This is a rendering of the, of the shop and the headquarter building. This is WMC 037-1, which is the residence replacement. Uh, we've advertised that and we are expecting to open bids in Atoka on March 26th, uh, so in a couple of weeks, and we have a budget of that of $350,000. WMC 040-R is the cathodic protection. These are one of, this is one of those projects that came up uh, during the process of 
uh, looking at the annual uh, uh, conditions. Uh, we had to rebid and we awarded this project to Wing Construction in October. We are approximately 65% complete and we anticipate this one will be completed in May of 24. And with that, I can answer any other questions that you may have. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for Mr. Long? Seeing none, I would Thank entertain you. a motion to approve the, uh, in, in one motion to approve uh, the general manager reports A, B, and C. So moved. We have a motion? Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor indicate by uh, approval by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. And the motion carries. I'm not aware of any citizens to be heard. Uh, I wish everybody a very happy Pi Day, and with that, we are adjourned.
Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I call the order of the meeting of the Lake Atoka Reservation Association and a little housekeeping before we get started as uh, voting members, if you could, uh, it was requested of me that we give uh, some type of modification or motion as to who made the motion and who made the second for the minutes keeping uh, it assists the ladies that are doing that. So did I do a good enough job? Okay, all right. So it's not on me anymore, we'll move forward. So, all right. Uh, first item for consideration is approval of the minutes of September 14th, 2023 meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve those minutes? Is there any questions on those minutes? Second, have a motion and a second. All those in favor, motion by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, items for individual consideration. A, resolution recommending the Oklahoma City Water Utility Trust receive and approve the Lake Atoka Reservation Association fiscal year 2025 budget for $603,755. Do I hear a motion to approve? Is there any questions first, I guess? Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, motion by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item B, receive financial statement and report of independent auditors for fiscal year end 20, or June 30th, 2023. Do we have anyone that's going to present it or just move forward? Okay. Any, any, questions. any questions? Yes, is this considered a clean audit? You just thought you were going to do it. Good morning. Yes, it's a clean audit. Excellent. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Have, have a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are there any items from board members? No, sir. Hearing none, we'll move on. Items from the City of Atoka, Lake Patrol, and Activity Report as provided by Police Chief of the City of Atoka, Chief Dotson. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I don't have anything exceptional to add to the report. Uh, we are in kind of the final phase of the boat project upgrade and continue to struggle with personnel issues like so many do. So. Okay. Very good. Do I have a motion to, any questions for the Chief? Do I hear a motion to approve the report? So moved. So moved. Second. second. Uh, a motion is second. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. As we move on to the general manager report. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Lake levels and pumpage report will be presented by Byron Trent. Good morning, everyone. On the uh, lake level and pumpage report, I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, to it, our current lake elevation is, you know, we're about an inch and, or a foot and a half below normal. Uh, we are anticipating um, everything to be topped off with the spring rains. I did uh, prepare kind of a resiliency check-in for our pump stations for basically meeting everybody's needs. Um, I'd like to focus a little bit of time and attention this morning on the PowerPoint presentation, if I can proceed. So the Southeast Water Supply um, Resiliency Check-In, basically our major pump <coughs> pumping station system components consist of our motors, uh, pumps, motors, our VFDs, our PLCs, surge system, balancing tanks, and the last portion of it is our forecasted budgeted capital improvement budget for FY through FY28. Um, this is the internals of the uh, Toka station, um, a lot of people are curious of what, what that actually looks like in there. Uh, the picture on the right is one of our pumps that's coming back from rehab. Uh, those get set up with crane and actually get lowered in through the roof. Uh, it's a pretty extensive process. Uh, the picture on the left is um, there's four pumps in that basement area. In the last uh, four years, we have rehabilitated uh, three of the four 
in the last four years. We did have one that had a, a critical failure, and that fourth pump is on order and is anticipated to arrive November 2025. Uh, we're looking forward to having that back this year's the final year for us to rehab all 16 pumps on the south end of the pipeline. On average, we spent uh, $77,500 per pump with a total cost of approximately $1.2 million. Um, when we get into our pumps, we have two types. We have a horizontal and we have a split case. Uh, the picture on the left is basically when we break these things open, what, what we're getting into after they go through the rehabilitation process. Uh, the picture on the right uh, deals with some of the internal repair and refinement. The uh, rotating assembly goes out. Um, kind of on our rotating assemblies, we've initially when these were bought, we invested a little bit more money with some stainless steel shafts and impellers. It was a good investment. Those are holding up really well. Um, this is kind of the upper picture of one of the split case pumps. Uh, currently, we're, these are our electric motors. Currently, we're running a predictive um, maintenance analysis for quarterly testing, and all of our motors are coming back with good scores still within factory specs. Uh, as part of our capital improvement, we'll begin cycling these out in 2027 um, for rehabilitation services um, or predictive maintenance analysis that we're going through right now will help us determine which ones need to go out first. Um, our PLCs are kind of the brains of these pump stations that talk back and forth with each other. Uh, we have replaced all of our PLCs, which is our program logic and control. Um, Part of this year, we're spending a focused portion on our VFDs, uh, rehabbing some of the major components of those. Uh, we do have some smaller um, cards that we've also, because of recent market challenges, increased our uh, supply because lead time's there. So if we have an event and we have a failure, we can get back up and running. Um, another portion of our pumping system is our surge system. Basically our surge system has been online for roughly three years and has been deployed during some of our severe weather power outages. Uh, this system prevents major line breaks and is working as designed. Um, with the added layer protection, basically we're safeguarding against breaks, ensuring that we can pump consistently and preventing costly line repairs. Um, <coughs> Another portion of our system is our balancing tanks. Uh, two of the three balancing tanks have, on the south end have been replaced. We do have one final that will need to be um, replaced when um, a later phase of the new pipeline construction. Um, we currently have nine capital improvement project numbers associated with our pumping operations. Uh, the biggest of this is split amongst the pumps, motors, VFDs, and PLCs. Our yearly allocation breakout from 24, <coughs> excuse me, 2024 to 2028 is right at $12 million. Um, as we move through this time range, I'm sure we'll have new things that will pop up on the radar and we will work to get capital improvement funds for those as well. And. Um, a lot of what we do uh, would not be possible without a lot of the people here today, people in the audience, and some that are, will no longer be with us shortly. So uh, we, we just want to say thank you for, thank you to everybody for the uh, assistance and helping us do what we do and deliver our service to the city of Oklahoma City, all our raw water customers in the city of Atoka. And that is all I have on our resiliency check-in. Are there any questions? You said you had one critical failure of a pump. Yes, sir. How does that affect our day-to-day? -day? So our pump stations are designed to have one um, 
extra pump and motor so that when we have a failure, we can bring that one back online and keep us at full capacity. Right now we can pump at full capacity, but if we had a event that at that same station, it would reduce our capacity to about 60 to 65 million a day until we were able to get that back online. Any other questions? Thank you, Byron. Uh, next, we're going to have a presentation on the projects. Uh, an update, Larry Hare. Good morning. Let's see here. Here we go. All right, status of uh, various Atoka projects that we have currently under construction. Uh, the Atoka Lake Road, which was uh, severely beaten up during the uh, time when the dam was being rehabilitated, is shown here on the south side here in yellow. And also the north side of the road in red had lots of alligator cracking and the separation due to uh, movement of the uh, soil base. Uh, we bid this project very recently. Um, we bid them both at the same time. One, the one that was beaten up by the uh, dam construction. Uh, we bid as a base bid. In the second part of the road, we bid as an ad alternate to encourage more bidders to participate as well as to see if we can actually afford um, both ends of the road uh, because of the uh, budgetary constraints that we have. Um, luckily, we had several bidders. The uh, competition was very tight. Um, the apparent low bidder is Ellsworth Construction for a total cost of $7.56 million. And we expect this whole thing to be done by the end of this year. For the Atoka Pipeline projects, we've got several currently um, going online. Um, out of 98.6 uh, miles of the, Atoka, uh, the second Atoka Pipeline that being constructed, I have roughly half of it under construction. Um, going uh, in order of the uh, pump station projects from the south to the northwest, uh, is, uh, the, the section from pump station O to Colgate, it's about 14 miles long, the contractor's Oscar Renda. Uh, they are about 56% complete with the pipeline installed, and we expect that to be done in October of next year. Moving on from uh, Stonewall to Ada, since we have not bid the Colgate to Stonewall section yet. Um, it's almost 10 miles long. Uh, the contractor's McKee. We expect this to be done in uh, June of next year. Uh, they currently have roughly one mile of pipe installed. 874, which is from the Ada pump station to uh, the river crossing of uh, the Canadian River, is almost nine miles long. The contractor here is also McKee Utilities. Um, we expect this to be done in July of this year, um, and they have roughly 98% of their pipeline segment installed. The river crossing, which is, um, uh, we're tunneling two new uh, bores underneath the uh, Canadian River, um, one for the brand new 72-inch segment of the uh, new pipeline, and one to replace the aerial crossing, as you can see here, going through the middle. Um, they are about 99% complete. They're redoing, or actually they're finishing construction on, on uh, uh, air rack vaults and uh, getting ready to uh, uh, hand it over to McKee to uh, complete the connections for the existing pipeline. Um, that operation has been is being coordinated with our operations staff out in the field and uh, uh, hopefully that will be done in uh, later this month or next month. Uh, moving on to 877, which is from Kanawha to about halfway to Macomb. Um, it's about 10 miles long. Again, McKee Utilities has this project. Uh, it's expected to be complete in July of next year. And uh, pipe deliveries for this particular project will begin uh, later on this month. 
Uh, projects I have uh, coming up next for this calendar year would be pump station O, which would be a brand new pump station that will transfer water from McGee Creek all the way up to the new pipeline to uh, Draper. Also, two more segments of the uh, uh, pipeline uh, from Colgate to Stonewall and from uh, the Canadian River uh, to the Conowa pump station. And I will entertain any questions you may have. So Larry, the, uh, the crossing, the existing crossing over the South Canadian River leaks pretty good. It leaks very well, yes. Yeah. So with the new, with the new river crossing, at what point will we be able to uh, benefit, get beneficial use out, out, out of the crossing and, and, and uh, bypass the uh, existing aerial crossing? Um probably in April or May of this year. Really? Yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Larry. You bet. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thanks, sir. This time, are there any, I don't know of any citizens to be heard. If there are any citizens to be heard, this is the time. Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you for your time today.